Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. I'm your host, Promo as usual. In case you missed last week's lecture, definitely click on the link below. It'll take you back to the previous lectures. What are we going to do today? Today, we're going to talk about the sex androgens, the adrenal gland producing these androgens, which give males and females sexual characteristics. And how are we going to do this? Again, I'm going to do a quick recap on the adrenal gland, and then we'll get right into this uh, colorful chart right behind me. So firstly, the adrenal gland, as you already know, is divided up into the cortex and the medulla. The cortex has the three layers, the zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis. How are you going to remember that? Just remember, when we talk about the kidneys, we're going to talk about GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. So that has the same abbreviation, GFR. The inner core over here, the medulla, you guys know, it both produces and secretes epinephrine as well as norepinephrine. Concepts that we'll talk about in our future lectures. So the best way to understand this chart is just, you know what, we're going to do column by column. You got three columns over here, the zona glomerulosa, the zona fasciculata, the zona reticularis. Again, just representing different layers of the cortex. Let's start off with the zona glomerulosa. The zona glomerulosa produces mineral corticoids. Which mineral corticoid are we talking about? Of course, our main mineral corticoid is referred to as aldosterone. Aldosterone, as you guys know, works on the kidneys, retains the sodium, gets rid of the potassium, gets rid of the hydrogen ions. The main thing over here is that cholesterol needs to be converted into pregnenolone by an enzyme called desmolase. Once we have pregnenolone, it's going to be converted into progesterone through an enzyme called 3-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. So this is one of the enzymes you definitely, definitely have to remember. From progesterone to 11-deoxycorticosterone, we have this important enzyme called 21-hydroxylase. 21-hydroxylase is an enzyme, if deficient, we refer to that as congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So we're going to learn about three enzymes. That's one of them. 11-deoxycorticosterone now needs to be converted into corticosterone through an enzyme called 11-beta-hydroxylase. That's the second enzyme that's important in the congenital adrenal hyperplasias. Corticosterone now gets converted to aldosterone, of course, aldosterone by aldosterone synthase. So that's an easy enzyme to memorize. Now, one thing you want to remember for sure, and this will be important again in next week's lecture, this product over here, 11-deoxycorticosterone, it has aldosterone-like properties. It's a very weak mineral corticoid, which has aldosterone-like properties. However, if this product accumulates, it has very strong aldosterone-like properties. Keep that in mind, because next week when we talk about these enzyme deficiencies, we'll see how this 11-deoxycorticosterone plays a very, very important role. The second column over here, the zona fasciculata. The zona fasciculata is responsible for producing our glucocorticoids. And what glucocorticoid are we talking about? We're talking about cortisol. Again, last week's lecture, the lecture before, we talked about cortisol. We talked about all of the physiology of cortisol. What are the effects of cortisol? We talked about what happens when we have too much cortisol and what happens when we have not so much cortisol, referred to as adrenal insufficiency. So to make sense of this column, we have to now refer back to our first column again. From cholesterol to pregnenolone, we remember that there's desmolase is the enzyme that converts it. Now pregnenolone, as you can see, pregnenolone goes this way and converts into 17 hydroxypregnenolone through an enzyme called 17 hydroxylase. This is the third important enzyme that we will need to learn about in our congenital adrenal hyperplasias. So that's the third enzyme. 17-hydroxypregnenolone now converts into 17-hydroxyprogesterone through the same enzyme that we discussed in the first column, 3-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. So again, that's why this enzyme is very, very important. From 17-hydroxyprogesterone, that can convert into 11-deoxycortisol through the same enzyme again, 21-hydroxylase. And once we're at 11-deoxycortisol, again, we convert into cortisol by the same enzyme, 11-beta-hydroxylase. So as you can see already, we have 11-beta-hydroxylase working over here. We have 21-hydroxylase working over here. And 17-hydroxylase is the enzyme which converts pregnenolone going horizontally. Good. The third concept, and this is the concept that we want to talk about today, the sex androgens. Well, what does that mean? Well, again, from uh, pregnenolone, we convert into 17-hydroxypregnenolone, and then into dehydroepiandesterone, which is referred to as DHEA. The main enzyme, again, we need is 17-hydroxylase. So now we can see, as when we have these blocks put in these enzymes, certain things will accumulate, whereas certain things will not be produced. Again, talked about in next week's lecture. DHEA is now going to be converted into androstenone 
dion. And how the same enzyme again, which is converting this first step, 3 dehydrogenase, highlighted in purple in all three columns. Once we have androstenedione, dion, it gets broken down into both testosterone as well as estrone. Testosterone now, and as well as estrone, get converted into estradiol. Testosterone to this enzyme referred to as aromatase. Testosterone gets converted into DHT. DHT is referred to as dihydrotestosterone. That is a more potent form. That is a form of testosterone that's going to give all the males the secondary sexual characteristics. So again, we'll see what happens when, you know, based on these enzyme blocks, do we have too much DHT or do we have too little DHT? And we'll see the effect on how it affects both males and females. And of course, remember testosterone gets converted to DHT by this enzyme referred to as 5-alpha reductase. So that's it guys, that's it. Uh, you know, the main takeaway point, I know it looks like like intense chart, but as long as you kind of keep in mind, you have this one enzyme, three hydroxysteroid, dehydrogenase, which does the first initial conversion step going vertically. And then you have these three enzymes. The first one has 17 hydroxylase that converts pregnenolone into 17 hydroxy pregnenolone, as well as progesterone into 17 hydroxy progesterone. So that's the, one of your horizontal enzymes. And what are we left with? Just two more enzymes, 21 beta hydroxylase, which converts this step into that step and 11 hydroxylase, which converts this step into that step. Those are the main enzyme guys, those are the main enzymes. And again, the last thing I want to bring up, ketoconazole. Ketoconazole is a medication, an antibiotic, which can also be used to treat some of the reproductive uh, pathologies, such as PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Ketoconazole will inhibit the first step over here, cholesterol to pregnenolone by inhibiting desmolase. And that's why steroid synthesis is reduced and ketoconazole is prescribed in a patient who has PCOS. On the other hand, you need ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone, to get the whole process started. Thank you guys, thank you. I wanna thank you guys for joining me today for this intense, yet very, very important lecture. Next week again, like I said, we're gonna talk about congenital adrenal hyperplasias. Until next week, I want you guys to like the video, give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, Definitely get on the computers, comment on the sections below. Again, have a great week and we'll see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.